specialized networks. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about specialized networks. And this is a new topic area for the Network Plus exam. Uh, networks have now gone beyond just computers, as we've talked about before. And now we have three main types of networks that we talk about in this Network Plus exam beyond computer networks. We have supervisory control and data acquisition, or SCADA networks, that are used to control and monitor remote equipment. We have multimedia networks that are used to provide streaming audio and video services to our remote users. And we have server and data storage networks that are used to provide a large amount of data storage to a server or workstation. So when we talk about SCADA networks, we're talking about these supervisory control and data acquisition networks. They're used to control and monitor remote equipment. You'll find these things have, are made up of programmable logic controllers, or PLCs. The PLCs will continuously monitor the state of input devices and make decisions based upon custom control programs and control the state of the output devices. So these PLCs might monitor, say, the temperature of a pot of water, and then if it gets too low, turn on a heat pump that will turn it, that'll make it hotter, for instance. Um, again, these are usually used in factories or power plants or electrical providers or dams, that kind of stuff. There is also uh, industrial control systems. ICSs, and these encompass control systems and the PLCs inside of the SCADA systems. If you see the term PLC or ICS, remember that they're associated with SCADA for the exam. Locations where you're going to find this used, power plants, manufacturer, manufacturing factories, uh, water and sewage control systems, things of that nature. The next big network that we're going to talk about is multimedia networks. And these usually are made up of two main components, either VTCs or VoIP systems. So VTC stands for Video Teleconference. And if you want to think about this like Skype, it's where you can see the person you're talking to and talk back with them. These are very popular in corporate environments. It is a communication technology that permits our users at two or more locations to interact by creating that face-to-face -face meeting environment. So I could be talking with somebody in Japan in a business meeting without him ever having to fly on a plane and get over here to DC. Used in a corporate and government environments for decades, these have increased to personal use through software such as Skype, Google Hangouts, and FaceTime by Apple. VTC systems transmit bi-directional audio, video, and data streams during the sessions. So you can hear me, you can see me, and one of these quadrants we can even put up my computer screen so you can see what I'm sharing as far as slide decks in a business presentation. The next thing we're going to talk about here is voice over internet protocol. And we've mentioned this several times throughout the class, but it is the communication technology to deliver telephone services over the internet. It significantly reduces the cost of phone service for residential and business uses. So most businesses at this point have switched over to VoIP service. One of the big benefits of VoIP is that there is pretty much no cost for any of your nation nationwide calling. So if you're calling inside the U.S., it's all just like making a local call. Whereas in the old days, if you remember, we used to pick up the phone with analog systems and we would be paying by the minute charges for our long distance. The next type of network we're going to talk about is server and disk storage networks. So we have three main ones here that we're going to cover. The first is Fiber Channel. It is primarily used by computer data storage networks. It is spelled F-I-B-R-E, not fiber like the fiber cable. Although they do use fiber cables to connect all this storage together. They offer speeds of two all the way up to 16 gigabytes per, uh, gigabytes per, gigabits per second. Excuse me. It started out as the storage arrays for supercomputers, but now we're finding them in storage area networks as well in server environments. The next one we have is what's called a Network Attached Storage, or NAS. It is a specialized device that is set up just for sharing files on a network. It can be a combination of hardware and software, and its configuration is specific to the function that it's doing, which is file serving. A good example of these are media servers that are becoming commonplace devices in home networks. For instance, in my home, I have a small hard drive that has an Ethernet plug-in. That is a Network Attached Storage device that's running a Linux specialized operating system to do nothing but serve files to my family so we can watch our movies around the house. And lastly, we have IP Small Computer Systems Interface, or iSCSI. And what this does is it allows SCSI commands to be sent over a local area network by communicating on top of the TCP protocol services. And so again, this iSCSI is just another evolution of trying to get network storage uh, as a way of doing it. As you can see in the picture here, we have a storage, uh, excuse me, a, a SAN, which is a storage area network. And in that SAN, we have storage devices such as NASes installed in there. We could have Fiber Channel installed in there or even iSCSI being used in that area as well. And those are our basic uh, specialized networks that we're going to be covering inside the Network Plus exam.